In today's video, we are talking about why is it a bad idea to move to Mars? Eight ways Mars can kill you. Let's start the video. Elon Musk wants humans to travel to Mars. He just doesn't want to be the first to go. Because, uh, there's a very good chance of dying. The risk of fatality will be high. Musk conceded in the course of describing SpaceX as absurdly ambitious and still preliminary. Plan to establish a human colony on Mars. There's no way around it. So, watch the whole video and see the eight ways Mars can kill you. Number one. Your rocket could blow up before leaving Earth. Musk's plan to go to Mars involves strapping a giant spaceship atop the biggest rocket that humanity has ever built. Because any rocket launch basically involves a long, controlled explosion. It's inherently precarious, no matter how many safety tests are done beforehand. If anything goes wrong, if the explosion gets out of control, the people strapped to that big container of fuel don't stand a chance. For context, NASA's space shuttle program carried 833 passengers between 1981 and 2011. Of those, 14 people died in explosions on two high-profile accidents, Challenger and Columbia, a fatality rate of 1.6%. That's vastly more dangerous than driving and a bit riskier than climbing Mount Everest. The fatality rate for the Apollo program to the moon was even higher, at 9%, but of course, SpaceX would be using newer, more complex, and yet untested rockets to get to Mars. So it's tough to say what the actual odds of death would be, possibly much higher. Number two, you could suffer serious radiation exposure from a solar flare. For the entirety of the journey to Mars and back, astronauts are likely to endure much higher exposure to radiation than they would on Earth. There's the flight to and from Mars. Outer space isn't empty. It's teeming with high-energy particles blasted out by the sun and other stars. Here on Earth, we're protected by our planet's magnetic field, which deflects them away. But once our Martian voyagers leave Earth, they'll be exposed. For the most part, this is a mid-sized problem. When NASA sent the Curiosity rover to Mars, it found that the one-way trip alone would expose unshielded astronauts to an extra 0.3 sieverts of radiation equivalent to 24 KDT scans. That's 15 times the annual radiation limit for workers at nuclear power plants, but not fatal. For context, one sievert is associated with a 5.5% increase in cancer risk. Eight sieverts can kill. The more worrisome part is what happens if the sun erupts and sends a major solar flare hurtling toward the spaceship mid-flight. In that case, the astronauts could be exposed to much higher potentially fatal doses. These flares are unpredictable. Although the proper monitoring system in place, we could in theory warn the astronauts beforehand. Number three, you could crash on Mars's surface while trying to land. Okay, you've successfully launched out of Earth and traveled six months across the solar system. And the red planet is in your sights. Now comes the really scary part. The old cliché about flying applies to spaceflight too, says McKay. It's long stretches of tedium, punctuated by a few moments of terror takeoff and landing. Under Musk's plan, your spaceship would be approaching Mars at 62,000 miles per hour. As it descends into the Martian atmosphere, the ship would then use supersonic retropropulsion, e, lots of little rockets firing at once in order to land on the surface of Mars. This landing maneuver could prove dicey. Because Mars' atmosphere is so much thinner than Earth's, there's less friction to slow you down, though still enough to heat the ship up to temperatures of 1,700 degrees Celsius. NASA has struggled to land even small robots on the surface. The system used to decelerate and then parachute the Curiosity rover onto Mars was mind-boggling, and Curiosity only weighed one ton. Musk is envisioning a payload of 450 tons. Plenty could go wrong. Buckle up. Number 4. Mars's low gravity might wreak havoc on your bones and muscles. We know that humans do just fine in Earth's gravity. On the other hand, we know that human bones and muscles can atrophy terribly in zero gravity, as seen in experiments on the International Space Station. 
Astronauts on the ISS have to exercise for two hours a day to prevent muscle loss, but their bones still lose calcium over time, and they don't recover until they come back to Earth. What we don't know is how the human body will fare on Mars, where gravity is only about 0.38 the strength of Earth. Many people have long assumed that humans can survive just fine in Martian gravity, it'll be just like Earth, only we can jump a little higher. But we don't actually know this for a fact, McKay says. It might turn out that low Martian gravity is just as bad for human health as zero gravity. If that's the case, that's really bad news for astronauts. Even with exercise, their bones will grow weaker, making injury in an unforgiving environment far more likely. Mars's low gravity might also erode other capabilities that are crucial for everyday functioning. Number 5. Your spacesuit or habitat could leak and you can't breathe Martian air. Anyone planning a trip to Mars will obviously have to prepare for the fact that there aren't ready supplies of food, water, and oxygen. These should be surmountable hurdles. You can pack enough food and water and humans could invent machines to break apart the carbon dioxide on Mars and yield oxygen. NASA plans to test this process in an uncrewed rover it's deploying to Mars in 2020. The real danger is with accidents. A spacesuit or habitat could tear, causing a loss of air. Mars is filled with dust and dirt that's likely to get everywhere. If any of it clogs a crucial seal and causes leaks, people could well die. If a door seal or a spacesuit gets dirty, that's a much bigger deal than it is here on Earth, McKay notes. Number 6. You could get poisoned by the toxins in Mars's soil. In the movie The Martian, a mighty sandstorm leaves astronaut Mark Watney stranded on Mars after high winds rip out an antenna and destroy most of his camp. That scene was a little exaggerated. Because Mars' atmosphere is so thin, 60 miles per hour winds don't produce nearly as much force as they do on Earth. But sand and dirt on Mars is definitely a problem. Mars periodically gets massive sandstorms that spread out across the planet and can last for days or weeks at a time. You don't want to be outside in one. All those little particles flying around could conceivably tear a hole in your spacesuit. Or, more prosaically, they could clog door seals, mess up machinery, or even cover up solar panels, depriving astronauts of power for extended periods. A related concern is the fact that Martian soil is toxic. It contains very high concentrations of perchlorates, salts that can do serious damage to the human thyroid gland. If your backyard had as much perchlorate as Mars does, it'd be a super fun site, McKay says. It's okay to touch Martian dirt with your bare hands, but you really don't want any to get into your drinking water or food when you tramp it into your habitat. You also don't want to grow plants using Martian soil. McKay also brought up another related risk. Right now, we're pretty sure there's no life on Mars, no strange microorganisms lurking in the soil. But we're not absolutely sure, so it might be a good idea to test out any proposed landing site in advance, in case there's anything harmful lurking. Number 7. Your fellow travelers could drive you crazy. One of the great challenges NASA is working through in preparation for a Mars mission is surprisingly mundane, making sure crew members don't grow to hate each other. After all, they'll be together for many months on end, far away from their home planet, isolated from their friends, intensely bored, and lacking much personal space. Better hope no one snaps. There's good news and bad news here. First, researchers have found that there are definitely people out there with the sort of even-keeled personalities suited for long space missions. Between 2007 and 2011, the Mayor's 500 project enlisted six-person crews for various lengths of time to simulate a Mars mission at a facility in Moscow. The final mission, lasting 520 days, went smoothly. No conflicts. Everyone got along amiably. The trouble is that we don't know if psychologists can reliably screen for the right personalities every single time. And it doesn't take much to sow chaos. Number 8. Extreme Need Mars is the last planet of the inner four terrestrial planets in the solar system at an average distance of 141 million miles from our Sun. It revolves around the Sun every 687 days and rotates every 24.6 hours, nearly the same as Earth. 
Mars has two tiny satellites, named Deimos and Phobos, shown below. They are most likely small asteroids drawn into Mars' gravitational pull. Deimos and Phobos have diameters of just 7 miles and 14 miles, respectively. An interesting side note, the inner moon Phobos makes a revolution around Mars in slightly more than 7 hours. This means, since it orbits Mars faster than the planet rotates, the satellite rises in the west and sets in the east if observed from the Martian surface. The Martian atmosphere is composed primarily of carbon dioxide. However, unlike Venus, the Mars atmosphere is very thin, subjecting the planet to a bombardment of cosmic rays and producing very little greenhouse effect. Mariner 4, which flew by Mars on July 14, 1965, found that Mars has an atmospheric pressure of only 1 to 2 percent of the Earth's. Temperatures on Mars average about minus 81 degrees F. However, temperatures range from around minus 220 degrees F in the winter time of the poles to plus 70 degrees F over the lower latitudes in the summer. If you love similar content like this, take a look at my other videos. And if you like it, please smash the like button. If you have further questions, feel free to comment down below. See you in the next video.